body with Tanzania Institute of Education. Welcome my students of Form 2 in this geography subject. This is a continuation of what we learned last time. To remind you, my name is Dorothy Makunda and we are continuing with our topic of water management for economic development. Last time, we talked about the economic importance of water. Can we remind ourselves what did we say was the economic importance of water? Briefly, water is used in industries for running and cooling machines. Water is also used in industries as a raw material for making beverages like water, I mean like milk, uh, soft drinks, coffee. The same water is used for generating hydroelectric power. That is the electricity, producing electricity, the one we use at home, at school, and the other places. And again, we say that water is also used for fishing. People practice fishing activities, selling fish locally as well as outside and getting money. That money generates economy of the country. Again, water is used for domestic purposes, like I have said last time. Now, today, our topic is a continuation of what we learned last time, but today we'll focus on three major things. The first one will be, we are going to look at the family size, water supply, and adequate, I mean, quality of life. Hmm, I write it, one, uh, water supply, uh, family members, and quality now in, in here talking about the family size of family members we want to see the relationship of all these things when we talk when we start with the family members it means that the actual number of members who are in the family right now how many are you in the house can you count it? You can simply count it. Maybe there is a father, mother, sisters, young brothers, cousins, and whoever is in the house. This is, we say, it is the actual number of family members. Now we say that if you are many, the larger the family, the larger the supply of water. Because if you are many in the house, it means that you are going to consume more water. And again, apart from consuming more water, if there is adequate supply of water, it means that automatically we'll have a good quality of life. Why? Because nobody will have to walk long distances to fetch water. So if you are, it doesn't matter how many you are in the house, but if there is a good supply of water, adequate water, then your life, the quality of life will also be in a good position. Apart from that, we say that, or even the whole, uh, the whole world realizes the use of water. That is why we have an article number 11, human right, the human right to water. We have human right, human right to water, and you can read that in Article 11, Article, Article 11, that is the human right of the United Nations. In short, what is the article saying? The article understands or realizes the use of water or the need of water. Now, the article uh, urges that or insists on the right of everybody to have, uh, to have sufficient food and shelter, 
everybody to have a good standard of life, everybody to have adequate health and the adequate of water usage. So, it means that we need to understand, we need to care for water because even the United States, uh, if, even the human right article insists on using water. And I also insist on you to use the water effectively because everybody needs water. Apart from that, let us think of effects of distance. I said that today we are going to talk about three different things. The second thing here, let us see about the effects. Effects of distance. to water sources. But not only just that effect, I would like specifically to touch a girl child and in Tanzania. We know, we know that water fetching in most of the Tanzanian societies is a cultural and gender related activity. If I say it is a cultural and gender related activity, what does that mean? Maybe you are living in town. Maybe you are living in a place whereby people don't go and fetch water. But I would like to stress that because most of people who fetch water in rural areas are women and children. I can say that the burden of fetching water, the burden of fetching water is borne by women and children, particularly girls. Have you ever fetched water? Maybe you once went to rural areas to see your grandpas or grandmas or whoever lives in the rural areas. Have you ever fetched water? Well, I think you did that. And again, what is the distance from home to the areas where you fetch water, if it is a river or if it is a lake or if it is anywhere? Have you seen the distance? Okay, now let us do that. It doesn't matter if you have fetched water or not fetched water, but would like also to consider that, knowing that the burden of fetching water in our Tanzanian culture mostly depend to women and children because it is the women who are supposed to go and fetch water and then they have to use that water for cooking, that water for washing utensils, for everything. Now, these people normally travel long distances. They will really travel to long distances to fetch water for domestic uses. And sometimes we may find a girl child coming from school after taking off the uniforms, then that girl will have, will be supposed to go and fetch water. Now, the traveling of long distances, these long distances are also coupled with so many other factors, such as they may have difficult terrain. They are faced with difficult terrain. If I say difficult terrain, what I mean? It means that the roads are not good. So sometimes they have to go up and down and up and down. All that area, which is not good, of course, they have to go and fetch water. Another problem which is coupled with that is also poor water flow. If I say poor water flow, it means that in rural areas, in the places whereby there are no tap water, mostly they have to fetch water from the wells or from the, uh, from the ponds or other places. Now, if they go there, automatically they'll find themselves that uh, there will be a lot of queue or people will have to, people will have to stay there for quite a long time waiting for water to get filled. If you have ever there, I would have told you that if you go to the well and you find that people have already fetched the water, you'll have to wait. You wait, you wait for quite some time so that the well will be filled again and you take water. So if you go there and find that there is no water, you have to wait. In addition to that, 
there is Q. A very long Q. Spellings here. Q. You go to fetch water and you find a long of buckets waiting. Now, those girls or those whoever goes to fetch water, you'll have to put your bucket in a queue and then wait for your turn. Now, if you consider all these, all these things, and it is a girl child who will go there, she will have to walk long distances, ups and down. She will have to wait. Maybe there is this poor water flow. And then she also have to stand in a queue waiting for her turn. So if you consider all these things, you will see that automatically it's a girl child who will be affected more in fetching water because of our culture, culture, what we, we do. This activity now appears to have direct impact appears to have direct impact on physical health of the girl. You know, sometimes carrying buckets of water, it may be very heavy for, for them, and some of them may be young. So it will automatically contribute to psychosocial problems. In addition to that, it will also have, it affect, oh, it affect them emotionally. And some of them will just say, wow, I need to go back. If I go home, it means I have to go and fetch water. So they become emotionally affected. And sometimes they can even, even affect their movement or they can have some pains. You know, carrying large buckets of water, let's say maybe it is 10, uh, uh, 10 ki kilos or what. So all these things becomes a problem to girls. But I would like to insist, it doesn't, mean, it doesn't mean that you are not supposed to fetch water. If you go to rural areas and you find that people are fetching water, you have to help your uh, grandees to fetch water. You may fetch water according to your level. And I hope that you will go in a group, not alone. In addition to that, we say that this mostly is noted. This problem is noted where? It is noted in low and middle income societies. That is why I asked you, have you ever fetched the water there at home where you are? Maybe you are living in, in, in an urban area. So in low and middle income societies, it is where we get all these problems of fetching water. And this can sometimes become serious. It may lead to low school enrollment in for girls. Now, you can find that girls will automatically enroll in a certain number. And then automatically, sometimes you will see them dropping. Why? Because there are a lot of problems facing them. They need to go and do this and do So, we say, that, therefore, access of fresh water and sanitation does not only improve the health of the family, does not only improve the, the health of the family, but also they provide an opportunity for girls. Hmm? Provides opportunities for the girls to attend school and use their time productively in academic than fetching water. So we need to make sure that there is enough water for everyone, for our girls, so they are not going to be disturbed. If you have discussed a little bit, let us now try to look at the relationship between water supply and vegetation. I hope you have understood what we said about fetching water. Now, the third thing I would like us to talk today is relationship, relationship between between vegetation and water supply. What is vegetation? 
Hmm? What is, ask your friend or whoever is close to you, what is vegetation? What do we mean when we say vegetation? We say vegetation refers to the collection of plants hmm? in a particular area under a certain climatic condition. That is what we call the vegetation. Hmm? If you look outside the window, what type of vegetation do you see? Or around your home area, what type of vegetation you, you, do you see? But don't worry, because as I have said, if you read this book, when you reach to chapter 4, you will learn about vegetation of different kinds, right? Now, we say that vegetation growth depends on various factors. In order for vegetation to grow, that will, depends on rainfall or water. It also depends on the soils of a particular area. I will not talk much of this as I have said that you will learn it when you, you enter in chapter 4. So, temperatures also. In order for plants or for vegetation to grow well, they will need rainfall because as the plants, they need water. They'll also need a temperature, a certain kind of temperature, and then they will also need good soils or a, a, a kind of relief. Now, amount of water supply in a particular area is determined by type of vegetation. If you see a very good area covered with uh, a very good uh, vegetation, you will automatically know what kind of rainfall is getting is uh, is needed here or how much rainfall is received in that area that is why i say that amount of water supply in a particular area also determines the vegetation growth for example in semi arid areas semi arid areas for example here in tanzania we have a uh, dodoma Dodoma and Singida. These are semi-arid areas. In semi-arid areas, this area mostly you'll find shrubs. I don't know what you understand, you know what, what shrubs are, but don't worry, you learn about them. When you go to Singida, when you go to Dodoma, kind of vegetation cover found there are shrubs. Why shrubs? It is because that area does not have enough water. The shrubs themselves do not influence. The shrubs themselves do not influence adequate rainfall. Why? The way they are. The leaves are too small. Now, our interest is not to talk about the shrubs, but I just want to show you the relationship between water supply and the kind of vegetation cover found in a certain area. That is Dodoma and Singida. Can you think of any other region in, in Tanzania whereby there are shrubs? Can you think of any, any region found in that area, some arid area? Really, you need to do that, right? When we think of clim equatorial, Climatic areas, for example, the Congo Basin. The Congo Basin is covered by vegetation which influence rainfall formation. If you go to the Congo Basin, you find there is a very, very thick vegetation. Now, why? It is because that vegetation influences the rain formation by itself. That is why that area has very high rainfall, and it has enough water supply. Can you remember any river that crosses around the Congo Basin? Can you? Well, try to think a little bit. Or can you also think, can you discuss with, with your friend that what regions are crossed by the equatorial region? You know, when we say equatorial region, we are talking about the equator, right? Now, five, let's say that this is the equator line. You know about the, you have already learned that even from primary school. 
some few, let's say five uh, degrees south and si south five degrees south. All this area that is covered by the equatorial region, that area is covered with dense vegetation and have enough rainfall. I give you an assignment to go and redefine those regions. Apart from that, we say that they cover, vegetation cover, almost protect the catchment area. Do you know where is the catchment area? Vegetation cover protects the catchment area. What are the catchment areas? Hmm? Simply, it means that the higher areas whereby the rivers or water starts from there. Can you give me a good example of that? Aha. Uh -huh. Can you think of that? We say that vegetation cover, if a, a, a place have a very good vegetation cover, it will automatically uh, protect the catchment area. And a good example is area around the Mount Kilimanjaro, whereby you'll find that around area Kilimanjaro, around Kilimanjaro itself, there is a constant of flow of water all over the year. Why? Because people themselves are aware. And the top area is also covered by um, good vegetation that protects the catchment area. And even the government says that people should not cut trees because if you cut a tree, you will let that area to be bare and again, people will start lacking water because you will be destroying the catchment area. I would like to emphasize in the caring and the protection of catchment areas. As I have said, along the slopes of Mount Kilimanjaro, that area water flows throughout the year because the catchment area is protected. Now, whenever you are, don't destroy, don't harm the catchment area because it is whereby we expect or we depend for water flow. Now, you have to know that plants normally adapt differently to their physical environment. For example, in dry areas, plants developing the, develops the following adaptation. In dry areas, in dry areas, plants normally develop the following adaptation. The first thing is that those plants, their leaves will develop thorny. Leaves develops thorn. Do you know the word thorn? The thorns that if you touch the leaves, they will hurt you. So the leaves normally develop thorn or wax surface. Why? Because they would like to protect themselves to reduce water through evaporation. Thorny and wax. That is how they adopt themselves, their adaptation. That is one thing. The second thing is that plants developed root, very big root. Why? So as to touch the water. B. They adapt themselves to roots. The third thing, other plants normally develop storage organs storage organs. For example, the baobab. Do you know baobab trees? Those very big trees with a very hard bark. Now, at the back, it is whereby they develop the storage organs. Why? So as to retain water. And you'll find this in dry areas. And the last thing is that other trees will shed their leaves. D, shedding.
because through leaves it is whereby transpiration takes place. So if they shed leaves, automatically if it is even a dry area, that tree will survive. I think up to there we are together. Now, human activities. You know, we have so many activities, can be economical or social or what. Human activities influence the relationship of this. We are talking about relationship of vegetation cover and water supply. Now, according to activities, human beings normally influence the relationship through water drilling and deforestation. I think you remember all these things. The influence through water drilling and through deforestation. What is water drilling and what, I, what is deforestation? You know that water drilling is drilling water so that you can use that water for other purposes. And when we talk of deforestation, it is whereby people cut down trees. The country is urging people not to cut down trees because if you cut trees, you will turn the, an arid area into the arid area or you can turn it into a desert. And we know that no water, no life. Do you agree with me? No water, no life. Our life depends on water. Now, up to there, my students, I would like to end it here so that when we meet next time, we'll talk something else. But before I leave you, I will give you some questions that you will see them popping in your screen. And before even those questions come, try to think of yourself. I have just said on how plants adapt themselves. Now, how will you adapt yourself when any problems uh, faces you? How will you adapt yourself? Because you cannot have to give up saying that there is this problem. And that. No, I would like to think. I would like to create any problem. Create any problem when you think, how will you adapt to that problem? Up to here, my students, I would like to say thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you.